What's up traders welcome back this video today is another in this series I'm doing cop professional trading and risk management with Michael Thoma. The past two weeks were really interesting really different topics. In episode number one we talked about risk management, episode number two was about strategies in the market and episode number three is all about backtesting. Now Michael has really really helped me quite a lot in my backtest in the past. I used to struggle trying to find ways to backtesting, sometimes running out of ideas, coming back to him and asking him for advice. And he would suggest me things that were really useful. So one key point we'll make here in this episode is that not all backtesting is going to work. In fact, most of what you'll backtest won't work and it won't be useful. But the small parts that really work and end up being a good strategy you can use will pay off for all the time you spend backtesting if you do it right. So you just have to do it right. And in this episode, we we'll go with backtesting first, then talk about some of the tools Michael uses and why you cannot only rely on indicators and stuff like that and kind of what he likes to use also. So quite interesting. I'll let you go with that. So let's bring back Michael. And we talked a few months back when I was back this thing, a strategy with Akinashi. Really interesting stuff, really cool. And he gave me a lot of ideas, which I really appreciate. But the strategy didn't really end up being really better than what I trade now. So I kind of put it on the side, put it in the trash almost. And you sent me something, you wrote something I found interesting, which is the fact that you back this a lot and not everything is going to be useful. Like most of it, you kind of put it away. But the small percentage of things that you use end up paying for all the time you spend doing that. Absolutely. I mean, if my trading plan, my trading strategies, which you know, three of them really account for eighty percent of my work uh, of my results, they're all from back testing, throwing out, tweaking. Um, you know, we talked about the example. I think that was like a Heiken Ashi uh, yeah. um, strategy that we, and I sent you these uh, reports and spreadsheets. And really, what I was doing, a lot of these strategies may not work. But you give them to someone else and they maybe tweak it, say, hey, you know, I noticed the success rate went up like, you know, 20% or something. So a lot of these are kind of putting together little pieces, kind of like the space shuttle design. And, and all of a sudden, what you had may not have worked, but someone else looks at it and they tweak it. Or I had a lot of strategies that didn't work. And then I put them with a different product, say like, a, you know, a, you know S&P futures didn't work. And then I applied it to Forex and, hey, this seems to be okay or vice versa. So there's a lot of this sort of mashup stuff going on and, and we've sent emails back and forth reports. And then at one point we just kind of scrapped it. Um, yeah. that, boy, that, that's about 90% of all the backtesting I've done, but you're right. It's finding that one. Um, and you know, again, a lot of them you inherit from other people and it may work for them, but it doesn't work for you. And there's so many variables that come into this, but, uh, you're right. It's, uh, you know, a lot of back and forth. And I think, you know, I, it's, by the way, it's still on my table, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not throwing it out yet, but, uh, I'm a big HA. I can actually, I mean, it works on a lot of products. I just think maybe we have to kind of revisit it and I, I can maybe take the next step, but, um, you know, maybe, and you brought up in that for that particular one. Um, you know, my back testing didn't really include support and resistance, which you do a lot of. So, you know, then you marry those two together and it improves a little bit. So there's a lot of back and forth, but yeah, again, it's grunt work. Um, I love it though. I love that grunt work. And uh, especially when you kind of see the light come out, it's like, you know, that that's, that's the joy that that's the thing I love about this business. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised that the results in your back testing depend on the level of experience you have in the market. Like someone new could not have the same result as someone experienced because they, they find a way to tweak it, make it better. Well, if you're brand new, you wouldn't yeah. find a way to make it better. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if I were to go back to this like five years ago and stuff I used to trade and try to tweak it and adapt it, I would probably find ways to improve, make it better. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's you know, there's a lot of tools that we use, and I know on your platform you have tools, that, you know, and I have others on mine. And we're in Montreal together. We were talking about I think you get a lot more done, like just kind of hashing it out, so to speak. Um you know, I, I just find that to be, to be better where you're kind of looking at the same data and, and things like that. Um, you know, you obviously have backtesting software, which is, you know, uh, more of a higher level than mine. So sometimes I feel like I'm the seed and then you know, I bring it through the software and then kind of tweet things. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it works when it works and it's magical. And then, but a lot of it does end up on the, on the, you know, on the bathroom floor. So then that's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cool. You mentioned having three trading methods and for people starting out with having nothing, do you mind like sharing with them a little bit what that's about, what it looks like, just a big overview of like things and kind of how this evolves to be that way a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a risk guy. So, 
you know, this may not be the answer a lot of people want to hear, but like, if you give me the numbers and you give me the like sort of risk reward and the percentage of profit, probability of profit, and again, I'm maybe talking to me over the options world, I will literally sell that. I will, you know, sell options or buy blind. I don't even care what the, what the underlying is, stock, uh, index or whatever, because the numbers are there and I want to take that. But as far as as far as actual trading, like in my futures or you know, even Forex, um, I use a lot of things where indicators that tell me, and you know, again, Heike and Ashley is a great example, or, where a trend is occurring and all of a sudden you're asking yourself, what are the buyers thinking at this point? You know, what are the sellers, what, what are they thinking? The market just went down, you know, say, you know, in the S&P 500, 15 points, pretty big move, you know, it's like 150 points on the Dow. And all of a sudden, I start to see things like Heiken Ashi changes, MACD turning green, and, and uh, you know, New York Stock Exchange tick volume increasing. Now I start thinking, what are the sellers thinking? If I was short, what am I thinking? Uh oh, you know, or is it just like the normal ebb and flow? Like I want to see panic in my, you know, and a lot of my strategy is designed to see panic, and I don't want to take the other side. Um, the other thing I use in, in my strategies, which again is, is sort of nuanced, I think in the trading world, is I use market profile a lot. A lot of times I wanna take a mind, my mind away from price. I wanna see the structure of where price is in relation to where price has been. Because the general tendency, or at least my strategies are based on the fact that price has a tendency to return to its area where it was most comfortable trading or the highest volume. And so, while I'm a trend trader, I guess, if you want to classify me that, I'm sort of, sort of reversion to the mean guy. And, um, you know, I'm not looking for big home runs. I'm just looking for trends to be exhausted and then revert back to the place where, you know, it was most comfortable doing business. I'm just looking for that little kind of transition and I just kind of take my crumbs and, and walk away. So those kind of, in a nutshell, kind of high level thinking of, of how I approach the market. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend something new to start with with market profile, or is that something that you kind of take time to learn and use? Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I mean, it's tough visually because uh, you know a lot of software packages may not have it, or they have limited sort of you know uh, you know data when it comes to that. Um, you know, a lot of people just like to see what their 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 trading platform has, like MACD or you know moving averages and stuff. Um, you know, but it's uh it, it takes time to develop. It's pretty fascinating what happens and because it's market profile is not just about trading um it, it you see it everywhere i mean it's you know when you go to a supermarket and if there's a huge demand for if the supply comes in where there's a over glut of cow producing milk you know, i could tell you pretty much the price is going to drop a little bit towards that nice happy median um you know it it applies to almost everything you know, economically where there's price and there's volume. Uh, and again, you know, if it's going to revert back to the area it's most comfortable, because really markets are pricing mechanisms. They're probing, you know, can markets go higher? Is there a demand for that? And if not, the price will revert back to where there's most buyers and sellers. I, I kind of, you know, it sounds simple, but my principal trading philosophy is I just take advantage of that reversion. Um, Am I wrong a lot? Of course I am. You know, when markets kind of break out of sort of uh, range to break out, you know, I'm aware of these things. And that's usually where my stop is, where I know I'm wrong, where now instead of becoming a balanced area, and I'm using like a market profile term, a balanced state to an imbalanced or trend thing, uh, you know, that's where I know I'm wrong. So, uh, and don't get me wrong, I'll trade trends. I mean, these markets are racing. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be a part of that. But I'm, I'm all, always thinking about the structure and how the markets are um, in the past and where it kind of gravitated to. Because, uh, you know, in the end, price is very deceiving. And people chase price. Oh, the market's tanking like 15, you know, 100 points, and I, I got to get in on it. And they chase. And Well, wait a second. Maybe it's just a probe to test and see if this is the a new area to do business or is it going to bounce back to the old way. So, um Definitely takes a while to learn, but uh, I encourage everyone to at least get a feel for it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good free stuff online, and uh, I use it all the time. There is not one trade I have in my trading plan that doesn't have market profile either as a primary driver or as a confluence driver to my trade strategy. 
And before market profile, how was your trading like? Uh, a lot of it was, you know, I was a big sort of fader, so to speak. So, uh, you know, that whole, you know, again, this is, this is not going to upset a lot of people now. I would never, this trend of your friend is your friend thing. I don't know. I just don't buy it. I, you know, taking advantage of panic where people are caught short or caught long or too long or buying at the top and it's not giving, benefiting them, those are the first ones that are going to bail. So I want to take advantage of that panic. That's kind of just the opposite of, uh, you know, sort of trend is your friend. Um, but, you know, I kind of used certain signals that I found to be valuable. Uh, Heike Nashi still is one of my kind of big ones. At least it tells me where I'm wrong. Um, and that's really what I want to know. I really don't want to know if this is the right trade, but I do want the markets to tell me if, you know, I'm on the wrong side. Um, so things like Heike Nashi, uh, you know, some of the simplistic stuff I've used in the past, like MACD, MACD, you know, full disclosure, do not use it as a trade signal, but it kind of is a great filter. Kind of tells me, am I on the right side here? You know, um, things like that. So, uh, you know, also, you know, I'll, I've used Keltner channels and use Bollinger's. I tend to use Keltner's. And I have a couple of charts with those on there. Again, I'm not really using it as a signal, but it kind of keeps me, am I in sort of that zone? where it's like a acceptable zone or are we outside where it's sort of, you know, an outlier, so to speak. And then they'll look for reversals, things like that. Mm -hmm. When you say do not use a MACD or most indicators as singles, why is that? Um, I guess it, it kind of, I'm not a big believer in red light, green light. I mean, if you have a, a larger, say you're a day trader and you want to be flat at the end of the day, if you use a MACD on say a 15 minute or a five minute chart, if, if it's like a red MACD and it's curving and goes green, you've missed a big chunk of the move. I mean, that's, you know, you're getting in, you're probably getting, you're probably, I'm selling it to you probably at that point. So um, I think a lot of people look at MACD as like the color change or, you know, it breaches that zero line. Um, yeah. I, I just find the moves really should be made on the, the other side and you want it to get to the zero line. And then maybe look to, you know, for these people jumping in on the bandwagon, you know, sell them into their strength. Let them take on the risk. Uh, I'm already out. So, um, again, a lot of these sort of, you know, packages that kind of show those indicators, you know, uh, moving average crosses, things like that. You remember, price has to move in, that in the other direction or in the direction to cross or a MACD to change. You know, there's a big chunk of that move. Can it go further? Of course it can. And, you know, I, I, I'll play maybe reversions back to a mid-range, um, you know, with confluence and things like that. But I, I just found that, that again, I, I love trading strategies that prove me wrong. I'm, I'm all for that. But um, a lot of the move is already made for it to get to that, that point in itself. That's interesting. And I totally agree with that. And, in fact, I did a video a few days ago about kind of, why you should not focus on like only one thing, but more process, like so, some coaches online and some indicators try to like focus, like this is the thing to look at, like price action or indicators. But then they, they forget that there's other parts that people just put be, like together to be able to come up with something better. Right. And, and you know, and I'm not, not knocking red light, green light kind of stuff or when things change or crosses and things like, but you know, maybe use that with a confluence, another layer of filter that comes in. So say you have, a, you know, a, a, I'm using right off the top, like a MACD change. And again, not a strategy or anything, but a MACD change. Okay. Maybe that's a trigger. Say, okay, if it trick goes from red to green, I'm only going to start thinking about long trades now. And then maybe work, wait for a pullback to a certain area of, of support and resistance, or, you know, wait for a hike and ashy change, you know, now, okay, now I'm getting interested. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to trigger my trades based on red, like some type of, you know, change in curve or anything like that. But what it is going to do is keep me on the filter as a filter on the right side of it. And I, I'm a big confluence guy. I'll have two or three levels of confluence. So they all kind of have to be matched up. So, uh, you know, in that regard, I love these uh, indicators, but um, I don't use them as triggers, which I know a lot of people do. So that's it, guys. I hope you like this episode today. Give a like, of course, if you like this video. Comment below what you thought. I want to hear your question. Michael and I, as always, will answer the comment. 
And keep in mind, if you want to watch part one and part two, they're going to be linked below. There's a special playlist only for that series that you can watch and rewatch and go through if you want. And that being said, the next episode will be live next week on the same day, on Sunday. And for me, I'll catch you back here tomorrow. Ciao.